Hello, welcome to VMC. I'm Dr. M. Today we are going to cover one of the most common types of feline lower urinary tract diseases. You need to know about this because a lot of times this issue can be misdiagnosed. So join me, you'll learn something today. So what is feline idiopathic cystitis? Well, that's actually a great question. Kind of the closest human equivalent would be the interstitial cystitis. And if you do know of any people that are dealing with that, they will report how excruciatingly painful it is. It's covered some of the symptoms that are commonly noted in cats that are dealing with a lower urinary tract disease. You might notice increased urgency to urinate or pain when urinating you might notice that they are grooming too much in areas often around the abdomen or back end so they might be losing some fur in those areas you might also notice some house soiling where your cat is eliminating outside of the litter box this is because when they are eliminating there's often pain associated with these diseases. And so in the cat brain, they think, oh, this litter box is causing me pain, so I'm not going to use that box anymore. Occasionally, cats can also become blocked where they are unable to produce urine anymore. You might also notice straining. There might be hematuria or blood in the urine. You might also notice other changes in behaviors. Maybe your cat acts more tired than normal. Maybe they're unable to rest because they're too painful, maybe they're vocalizing more, maybe they become a bit more aggressive in behaviors than normal, like they don't want you to interact with them as much, but really any change in behavior, including change in appetite, can be related to feline lower urinary tract disease. We also know about some risk factors that predispose some cats over others to cystitis. The most common risk factor are cats that are of middle age. There may also be a predisposition for cats that don't get as much exercise and if they're having arthritis or other medical issues that might reduce their activity levels, those medical issues must be properly managed so that your cat can maintain their activity. Cats that are overweight are also at additional risk, so please see my link for feline weight loss in the video description if that describes your cat. Feline weight loss is a bit tricky and it needs to be approached very carefully so definitely do not attempt feline weight loss just on your own with no guidance. The next thing to note is that FIC is a diagnosis of exclusion. That is why I previously did a video on the most common causes for why a cat might be house soiling. It's a lengthy list and all of those things must be diagnosed or ruled out before we can even consider FIC. I see. That being said, about two thirds of our cats that have feline lower urinary tract disease are dealing with some component of feline interstitial cystitis. There are some findings in our diagnostics that might hint towards FIC. On the ultrasound of the lower urinary tract, there might be some inflammation noted in the bladder wall. That would be uh, pretty classic for FIC. We might also sometimes see blood in the urine samples, but there are a bunch of different issues that can cause that finding. So again, we have to do the diagnostics to rule out the other concerns before we are left with the diagnosis of feline interstitial cystitis. Next, let's cover what causes FIC. What is the underlying issue that is causing these cats so much trouble? Unfortunately, the idiopathic in FIC stands for we don't exactly know yet, but the research has given us some hints towards some components for some cats. So it is normal for in the feline bladder that there is kind of a mucus layer that's made up of glycosaminoglycans and that layer coats the bladder cells in order to prevent the bladder from being irritated from holding on to such a high concentration of the waste products that the kidneys are trying to remove. And urine is also a little bit acidic or it should be in a healthy animal. And so this mucus layer helps to protect 
the bladder wall from that acidity as well. So in cats with FIC, this mucus layer is deficient or in some way defective. And we aren't sure exactly what causes this to happen in these cats, but having a deficient or defective mucus layer results in the cells of the bladder wall becoming irritated. They might become quite inflamed, which is very painful. Second, some cats deal with a component of neurogenic inflammation. The nerves in the bladder are irritated, causing additional pain for the cat. Now this irritation could be secondary to the inflammation within the bladder wall. It could also be because of stress in that cat's brain and that stress could also be contributing to inflammation, causing the cat to be painful. Three, for a certain subsection of cats with FIC, there does seem to be a component of stress because their flare-ups of symptoms will happen after a stressful event. Four, some cats seem to have a bit of an abnormal stress response. In a normal cat, it is very common for them to have elevated levels of adrenaline and cortisol when they are stressed. Some cats with FIC will have elevated levels of the adrenaline, but their cortisol is actually lower than should be expected. And we're not sure how this causes FIC. This is just a finding that we are aware of and who knows what else that we haven't discovered could also be playing a role. But since we don't know that information yet, we form treatment plans based on the information that we do have. For management, if you have a cat that's been diagnosed with FIC, a lot of them will have flare-ups of symptoms. So it's important that we recognize that and that we are prepared for when those flare-ups occur. The very first and most important thing that you can do for your cat is to ensure that they have appropriate litter box husbandry, which most people get wrong, and that they have enough enrichment, which again, most people do not provide for their cats. We also need to make sure that water husbandry is appropriate, and a lot of people get this incorrect as well. It means at least one fountain running water source, and all water sources must be stainless steel, ceramic, or glass, because plastic gets micro scratches in it that you are unable to clean, and bacteria is harbored in there over time. So having proper water sources that are clean daily is an absolute must. When we move on from the basics of husbandry and enrichment, we also have to implement a multimodal treatment plan. For many cats, this includes a prescription diet. The prescription diets that we have help in a number of ways. Some of them are proven to reduce inflammation within the bladder, which is incredibly helpful. They also encourage more urination. So the more frequently that the cat is voiding their bladder, the less time the urine is sitting there contacting the abnormal mucus lining cause less irritation to the bladder wall. This is also one of those scenarios where using a canned food diet is most often recommended. This is because the water content in the canned will also help. So many cats are very choosy with the textures of their diets and so so make sure that you are very gradually transitioning over and if you have a cat that just dislikes the texture of canned food, don't worry, uh, there are prescription kibbles as well. We would prefer that they eat as much canned as is possible, but in real life that's not always possible and so if a prescription kibble and can needs to be mixed or if your cat just refuses canned altogether, then at the very least use the prescription kibble. Now there are going to be a number of cats with FIC that once their litter box water and enrichment is done appropriately Appropriately, and when we pair that with a prescription diet, a lot of cats will do really well with that treatment plan. But there are going to be other cats that also need additional treatments. If there is maybe some mild stressors occurring, we might consider using a feel-away diffuser or a Zilkeen supplement. Again, these things, the research behind feel-away isn't fantastic, but some people seem to note a marked difference for their cat, so it could be worth trialing. Zilkeen 
has tryptophan and casein in it and again can be helpful your veterinarian may recommend using calm let's move on to prescription medications that we should be using for cats with fic we don't have a lot of research on this yet but as adequan is a psgag there are some people who think that using those injections may help improve the glycosaminoglycan lining in the bladder. You can discuss this with your individual veterinarian if it's worth trialing for your individual cat. But the biggest thing that is often neglected and that we must not forget about is how painful this disease is when the cat is experiencing a flare-up. And so pain medication is an absolute must. And often these cats need multimodal pain management. So we consider things like anti-inflammatory medications. We also consider things like buprenorphine. Sometimes we might also use gabapentin as for some cats that can help with a bit of their stress and also help with some pain if they're experiencing a neurogenic aspect of their pain. Now for a while we were also recommending a lot of antispasmodics because for some cats the urethra will spasm and then they are functionally unable to urinate. But the research on how effective things like prazosin are is mixed and so your veterinarian will guide if this is worth trialing for your cat or not. If your cat is experiencing significant stress or anxiety, then using prescription medication to reduce that stress might be helpful. If that is the case, working with a veterinary behaviorist is going to be an absolute must for you with your cat as they can address the prescription medication and more specifics about how to reduce the stress within your household for your cat. Lastly, because we know that being in a multi-cat household is a factor that predisposes cats to having FIC, there may be some cats that need to live in a household without other cats. So in some severe circumstances, we may need to address moving the cat to a household where they are going to be a lot happier. Because there are so many components to feline idiopathic cystitis, the best treatment for your individual cat may require some trial and error. As a team with your vet clinic, go through until you have sorted out what's most effective for your individual cat. I will also note here that if your GP veterinarian has run out of ideas or ways to try to help your cat, you can consult an internal medicine specialist in order to get additional help if your cat is still struggling and an internal medicine specialist may need to work with a veterinary behaviorist in order to make the best treatment plan for your cat. I also want to note here there can be times where the cat is so painful or they are experiencing so many spasms that they are unable to urinate. If this occurs or if you're seeing your cat is urinating tiny amounts or they're quite painful while they're trying to urinate, this is an emergency and you need to take your cat immediately to an emergency clinic. If these are left unattended, your cat can become quite sick and it can cause damage to the kidneys and eventually they will die. I'm so grateful to the people who have contributed to helping me get some of the foam to improve the sound quality in these videos and reduce the echo and reverb and noises from outside. And I do highlight a new comment every week. This week, let's highlight this one. We put out a new video most Fridays. If you have a topic you'd like me to cover in the future, please comment it down below. I read every single comment that you leave for me. I hope that you have a wonderful week. We'll see you next Friday. Bye.